Hello beautiful people, I'm Hui Bring from SPJ Quill. Welcome back to my channel. Joy. Quilling is actually a comeback craft from the 18th century. Even so, the sudden surge in popularity in the modern days, there's still some mystery about this particular craft. Very much depend on our own research and development. For more information, you can click on the top right button to check out my previous video that I share about the history of quilling. So, with lots of talented makers returning to quilling and inspire people with their work on social media, it seems so easy with just quilling strips to get. But when you get your hands to it, here is how you imagine it will look like. But reality, it looks like. Have you wondered what makes it so different? In this video, I'm going to show you how to quill the basic shapes and will reveal to you beautiful people some tips on how to quill better as well. I promise when you finish watching this video, you will be able to solve this problem. Surface not flat, uneven spacing, over loose coil, bump joint, and dirty gluing. Without further ado, let's begin! The main tools we are using for today is the slotted tool. I'm using the most regular slotted tool for today's tutorial. There are also various sizes as well. If you have no idea on what are the different types of tools and their uses, don't worry about it. I'll be doing a video to introduce all the tools for quilling in my next video. So do subscribe my channel, please! Hit the bell button for the first to get notified when a new video pops up. Thank you! The next is paper strips, the tweezer, a quilling coach, a circle mold, some needle, a cardboard mold, scissors, and glue. I divide the basic shapes into three sections. First group is the tight coil shapes. Second is the loose coil shapes. And also the scroll shapes. Now here come the first steps. Here is an example of uneven surface and even surface. It's important to keep it evenly flat during the process of quilling the paper. That's why I'm using a curling coach to help me with it. It's beginner friendly. When you got used to it, you can also achieve this effect by just hand controlling as well. The first shape is a tight coil. I'm slotting in a 0.3 cm strips. I'm using the curling coach as a base and a finger on top to press the paper in place. The best part of curling coach is your coil won't go misplaced when you pull out the slotted tool. In addition, use the back end of the tweezer to make it flatter. Next up is a tight ring coil. We are going to bring up the circle mold. Slot in the sorter tool and turn the opposite direction to widen the coil. Use tweezer to pick up the coil and we need to glue the end. And now, here come the second tips. To prevent dirty gluing residue, use sharp tip to control the amount of glue usage. Make sure it won't overflow out of the side. If you don't have a needle nose bottle, use a needle to pick up glue will also do. Next up is a tight Marquis coil. It's a foundation of a tight ring coil. And pinching two ends to form a Marquis shaped coil. Next up is a tight heel drop coil. A tear drop instead of pinching two ends, we just pinch one end. Let's move on to the loose coil shape group. Next up is a Marcus coil. Now here comes the third tip. If you want beautiful even spacing coil, make sure you use your tweezer to adjust it before pinching it to shapes. Pick it up and put pressure straight towards the corner where the tweezer is pinching. This is to have the center hole stay in the middle and the folding inner forms a straight line. Next up is a loose coil. And now here come the fourth tips. It's the most common detail that people wouldn't like. Mismatch between different length of paper strips with wrong size of circle mold. The shape appear to have less coil and a lot of anti-spacing due to a short length of paper strips but put into a bigger size circle mold. I'm using 40cm strips with number 15 mold hole. Just the perfect fit. Take note on this and trust me, your artwork will appear more appealing. 
Next up is the S Inner Marquis Coil. Use the tweezer to hold the center in place. Then slightly rotate it to form a S inner line in the middle. Next up is a leaf coil. Hold on both ends and push against each other. Next up is an elongated teardrop coil. Different from Marcus coil, teardrop coils start pinching from the corner where the tweezer is. Then you will have a straight inner line teardrop coil. A perfect teardrop is to have the center hole to stay at the bottom. Simply by using a cork bolt. Put on slight glue on the surface and a needle to hold it in place. When it's dry, voila! Next up is the oval coil. Put pressure straight towards the corner where the tweezer is pinching. But this time, don't press the side. Slightly hold to let it form its straight. Then use a tweezer to rotate the middle to have a beautiful S in a line. Next up is a half moon coil. Put pressure straight towards the corner where the tweezer is pinching. Press downwards on one end, then the other end to have a curved shape on one side. Next up is an arrow coil. This time, pinch on the opposite side of the holding tweezer. Then, use the back end of the tweezer to push in from the center. Squeeze out two sides to form a triangle. Next up is an angle Marcos coil. Same like the arrow coil, both pinch on the opposite side of the holding tweezer. Pinch on the top, then push the two ends toward each other. Next up is the bunny ear coil. With the help of slotted tool, the round surface is perfect to form a half circle. Press on the slotted tool to form the bunny ears. Easy peasy. Next up is a diamond coil. First, do a Marcus coil. Put pressure straight towards the corner where the tweezer is pinching. Then, by holding the two ends in one hand, push towards each other. Then you will have a four side and form a diamond coil.
Next up is a teardrop coil. The difference with teardrop coil is the inner line can be in C shape. You don't need to do gluing on the surface like the elongated teardrop coil. Just release freely, it will naturally form a curve. Next up is a loose teardrop coil. Do a loose coil, remember to adjust the spacing in between. Then, pinch only the tweezer holding corner. Put it on the cockbox mold. Put glue on the surface to hold it in shape. Use needle to pin it in place. This shape can be used as a flower petal. Next up is a dark foot coil. Do a loose coil. Put pressure slightly behind the corner where the tweezer is pinching. Now use the tip of tweezer to press down to create a W shape. Tidy the shape to have a better look. Next up is a square coil. It's the foundation of doing a diamond coil. Marquis coil first, then pinch the two ends towards each other. Tidy the coil to a square shape and you are done. Next up is a triangle coil. First, do a loose coil. And pinch on the opposite side of the holding tweezer. Release the tweezer and use two fingers to squeeze up to form the other two angles. Next up is a rectangular coil. It's the foundation of a Marcus coil. By pinching the two ends slightly slanted 15 degree. Tidy the shape to make it look like a rectangle, and here is how it looks like. Next up is a half circle coil. Do a loose coil, glue the end strips and you can release the tweezer. Use both two finger pinch two sides then you will form a flat surface. Lastly is from the scroll shape group. Next up is a V scroll. Fold the strips into half then use a slotted tool quickly glide on both paper to soften the strips. Now just quill both ends and then release. Next up is an S scroll. Roughly fold half but do not fold the strip. It's just for your reference to know the center of the strips. Now quill both ends on different direction. Then you'll get an S scroll. Next up is a love scroll. Quill both ends towards each other. Easy peasy. Last is an F scroll. Fold the strip half, quill one side shorter and one side longer, and voila!
although we have finished our last quilling of basic shapes, but there is still one last tip left that I promised to share, that is how to prevent dent when you have to quilt extended strips. Here is a way to avoid dent. When you finish quilling half of the strips, add in the second strips. And when the second strip is half long, add in the third strips and continue so on to your desired length. Here is the difference with smooth joint than joint. Finally, we are done with the most basic shapes of quilling and 5 tips to help you perfecting your quilt. Remember to subscribe my channel because the next video will be about the tools. Well, how the happy time flies, now it's time to say goodbye.